Hey guys, welcome back. So we set up our two fields in the previous video, and now we need to start building our screen flow. I'm going to press new flow from the uh, flow builder creation screen, and we need to select a flow type. And if you had to take a guess, I hope you said that we're going to pick a screen flow because that's exactly right. So I have screen flow selected and I will press create. And this will take us to the flow builder canvas. For this challenge, I'm going to switch to the freeform layout. And the reason I'm doing that is just so that we can all see the elements over here on the left as we're kind of working throughout the flow. If you prefer to use the auto layout, that's totally fine. I mostly like the freeform layout for instructional purposes. So in this first video um, of the flow building, um, what I'll talk about is the screen element itself. So let's drag this screen to the canvas. And let's just kind of go over some of the basic configuration for this uh, screen element. And I know we already talked about this in the intro or the basics video, but this will be a good refresher. And so the first thing that we need to do is give our screen a name. I usually just name it like screen one, unless I have a reason not to give it a name based on a number, but that's typically fine for me. Things that we also need to set up when we're configuring our screen element in this screen properties section are the header and the footer. And so we'll start with the header. I typically hide the header and where the header appears in the screen is up here. So this like blue highlighted portion is the header. And if I click hide, it goes away. Um, this flow label is replaced by the name of the flow once you save it. So whatever you name your flow, that's what appears here. And I typically don't think end users really need to see it. So that's why I, I hide it. That takes us to the footer. And the footer has some more interesting options. And the footer, as you might imagine, is here at the bottom. And this is where our buttons live. And those are the options that we get to configure over here on the right. Uh, we can configure the next or finish button, the previous button, the pause button. And then if we um, have a pause button, we can configure the message there. So the, the takeaway here, the thing that I want to point out to you is that if you want to change the names of your buttons, uh, this is the place to do it. So the functionality will be the same. But let's say instead of having uh, the name previous as one of your buttons, you could press use a custom label and then you could type in whatever your button name would be. So if I wanted to name it like the back button, for example, you can see that when I type the word back here, the name of the button changes to say back uh, up here as well. I'm going to just keep the standard label. Um, I don't see a need to change it for this particular use case. But if you don't like the standard labels or you ever need to change them, that's where you do it. The final thing that I will uh, kind of point out here is that we can hide any of the buttons. And I tend to hide the pause button. So the pause button gives you the ability to pause a screen flow as an end user and come back later. And I don't think for this use case, it's a good fit. Um, it would be a good fit if you know you had to fill out a very long screen flow. Let's say you were making a new account in Salesforce and you had to get a ton of information that you might not have right away. And maybe you get interrupted and need to come back. That's when a pause uh, element could be really useful. Uh, but here we don't really need it. So I'll just hide that. And that's all we need to do for our screen. So I'm going to press done just so we can get it on the canvas. I'll connect the start element to screen one and I'll press save. And then I'm just going to call this a screen, oops, screen dash uh, create lead for shipping specialist. So that's a pretty good name. It's descriptive. I'll press save. And now what we need to do is open up our screen again. And we need to kind of talk about what uh, the purpose of this screen is. So as we know, we're going to help Pedro uh, and his junior sales team members collect more information. And so that's typically going to be done on the phone. And the reason I bring that up is because when you're building out a screen, you really want to think about the use case that you're trying to solve for and that the problem you're trying to help the business with because uh, understanding that better will determine exactly what steps you take when building your screen. So that's important here because when a user opens up this screen, the first step we need to um, put on the screen is going to be dependent on what they're doing. And in this case, it's going to be a phone call. You know, we know that from the, the business challenge that the junior sales team is, is taking a call and they need to you know, schedule a lead. So they might have been talking with someone and found that they just don't uh, know the answers to certain questions. And so um, that's what this screen is, is meant to help with. So let's drag an element to the screen 
and we'll configure that element based on some of the things that we just talked about. The element we'll use is the call script element over here on the left. And so we can drag this over to the screen. And the call script element, this is probably the first time we worked with it, but it allows you to put text up on the screen for an end user to read. And that's really helpful because as we just mentioned, our junior sales team is gonna be on the phone with people and they need to be um, you know, reading or, or interacting with the customer. And so we spent a bunch of time talking about exactly what that interaction will be like. And that was important because it tells us what we need to type in here in the script text. So I'm gonna name this call script, I'll call it call script one. And again, I don't have a better name, but if you do, feel free to enter it there. And our script text will be very much in line with the business challenge. So we'll say, I can get you scheduled, or maybe um, I can schedule an appointment with a shipping specialist for you. It's like, may I have your name, please? May I have your name again, please? And so I'm kind of pausing while I'm thinking about this because I really want the, the call script to be true to the customer interaction. And I think as you go through your career, the more uh, thoughtfulness you put into uh, your screen flows, the better they'll be and the happier your end users will be. So again, uh, the, someone has called into Universal Containers and they're like, hey, I have a question. How much does it cost to ship a container to Australia or something? Um, and so this junior sales team person doesn't really know the answer off the top of their heads. And this screen flow is meant to help with that. So the first kind of line here is like, um, maybe I'll just say like, great question. I can schedule an appointment with a shipping specialist to answer that for you. This uh, with a shipping specialist to answer that for you. And again, I hope this isn't too tedious, but it is really important that your uh, screen flow interactions are true to the customer interaction. You know, we don't want to have clunky language or anything like that. We want everything to be spelled right. And we really want, you know, the junior sales team uh, who's new to universal containers and learning the process for the first time to have a great experience when they're working with our screen flow. So I think this is a good transition and something we could ask Pedro about. It's like, hey, does, is this kind of, does this make sense for the customer interaction? Um, but that's where we're, we will start. And now that we have that on the screen, you can see that as soon as we typed it in here, it kind of showed up on the screen with our little quotes. And that's awesome. So let's press done and we'll press save. And then we'll just quickly debug the flow so you can see what it might look like as an end user. And we don't have any input variables, so I'll just press run. And you can see that when the flow appears, uh, we have our um, you know two quotation marks, and it's very clear that you know this is probably something we should be reading. So we can say, great question. I can schedule an appointment with a shipping specialist to answer that for you. May I have your name again, please? And this is a really good way for the junior sales team to start collecting information from the customer on the phone. So I'm going to close out this uh, debug window now. And in the next video, we will start to collect some of that information with the uh, first and last name, as well as the email and phone number.